moving on from the somewhat rocky start of Star Trek The Next Generation's Episode 1, we move on to Episode 2, The Naked Now. I do not have any intention of reviewing every single episode of The Next Generation, I just feel it's important to point out the best episodes, the worst episodes, and the other important episodes. Unfortunately, Episode 2 is not very good, but being Episode 2, I do feel the need to do it. The episode begins with the Enterprise moving to intercept the SF Silkovsky, which has been receiving a number of erratic messages from. Well, hello, Enterprise. Welcome. I hope you have a lot of pretty boys on board, because I'm willing and waiting. Hearing the sounds of explosive decompression, the guard decides to investigate. <laughs> An away team beams over to find the entire crew dead. Some have been blown out of the hatch on the bridge, others have frozen to death in the crew quarters. Geordi catches the corpse of a woman falling from the shower, and that's where the trouble begins. The away team returns to the Enterprise and undergoes a medical examination, where Geordi shows signs of irritability and sickness. Why are you perspiring, Lieutenant? I suppose because you have it too hot in here. What else would it be? Apparently having been a fan of the original series back in the 60s, Riker recalls the episode The Naked Time, but he cannot remember the details. All I have is a vague memory of reading somewhere about someone taking a shower in his or her clothing. With this clue in hand, Data sets into the historical record looking for the reference that Riker is thinking of. Geordi just decides to go and wander off and goes and finds Wesley Crusher. He finds Wesley, who is in the process of being an irritating genius, and infects him by touching him on the neck. Tasha finds Geordi on the observation lounge, and after the most awkward come on in television history, infects her by touching her face. Data searched through the computer, finds the reference to the naked time, and the information is fed to Dr. Crusher. The answer to all of this is feeding into your medical bags right now, including a cure. Are you certain, Captain? Be a little bit less certain, Captain. The now infected Tasha breaks into Troy's quarters in order to steal some of her clothes. You always wear such beautiful clothes, Alfredini. The infection spreads to Troy, and Tasha moves on. Tasha goes on the prowl for a piece of meat, and we see a large portion of the crew has been infected already. Wesley, using technological trickery, calls away the staff of the engineering department. That way, he can take over. Is that the captain ordering you to medical? Which would leave no one here on duty. The chief was just summoned to the bridge. What about me? Wesley then proceeds to declare himself captain. Acting captain. Thank you, Captain Picard. Wesley barricades himself in the engineering department, but does allow this drunk engineer in anyway. Tasha sets her sight on Data and moves in for the kill. I am programmed in multiple techniques. A broad variety of pleasure. Oh, you jewel. That's exactly what I hoped. While the two of them get busy, the engineer Wesley led through the barricade proceeded to rip the computer to pieces. Bill. In the very few times that she uses this name in this show, she calls Riker Bill as she goes up and infects him. Riker carries Troy to sick bay and immediately infects Dr. Crusher. The star begins to collapse, but with Wesley in control of the ship, they are unable to escape. The star. To collapse. Somehow infected with the disease, Data returns to the bridge. <laughs> Do I not leak? Crusher, clearly infected, now heads to the bridge, and we also see that Captain Picard has become infected as well. Not now, Doctor. Please. The star explodes, and time begins to run out. The chief engineer manages to get access to the engineering section, but is unable to control the ship because the computer had already been dismantled. These are control chips. With a piece of stellar debris heading their way, Data begins the job of reassembling the computer. Despite being in an advanced state of intoxication, Crusher manages to find a cure for the disease. If, if that's something you were going to test... Yes, on Jordy! With Data unable to complete the job of reassembling the computer in time to escape from the stellar debris, Wonderboy decides to use a repulsor beam to push the Zakovsky away, potentially allowing the Enterprise enough time to get moving. With the ship out of danger, everything begins to return to normal. I'm 
only going to tell you this just once. It never happened. So, what's wrong with this episode? Well, it's just kind of boring. Nothing exciting happens. You do get some interesting and odd behavior out of the characters, but this is only the second episode. It's a bit unusual in my mind to have our characters acting out of character, seeing as we barely have any reference at this point as what is normally in character for them. I also have a hard time ignoring the fact that this is just kind of a sequel to the TOS episode, The Naked Time. That episode, which did occur rather early in its run as well, did at least occur a handful of episodes deeper into the first season. Coward! There will be callbacks to this episode later, specifically Data and Tasha's sexual encounter will be referenced later, but for the most part this episode only managed to continue to present Wesley as the Wonder Child. This episode is not thought-provoking, funny, thrilling, or anything that might give it a better score. You're off to kind of a bad start here, TNG. One out of five.